Welcome to Azad Bio Academy. Today's lecture topic is insulin resistance. That means in our body, insulin production is normal, but insulin does not work properly. That means your cell tissues is not responding properly to the insulin. Okay. So what will happen? If insulin does not work properly, then uh, normally your blood sugar level will be higher because insulin will facilitate to enter the glucose from bloodstream to the cell. Okay, so if it is not done properly, then it will cause type 2 diabetes mellitus, you know. So today I will uh, talk about the insight of the insulin resistance in molecular level. Okay. So before going to the molecular level discussion, firstly, I will uh, talk about the main regions of insulin resistance. Why insulin resistance occur? But today's lecture topic is how insulin resistance, uh, resistance occur. Okay. So firstly, you can say some genetic uh, matter, genetic factor. Some, uh, someone is just carrying some susceptible gene which can easily affect it and can cause insulin resistance. So this is one is genetic matter. Second one you can say age. Age is a factor because someone is getting older. Of course, their cell tissues overall function as well as the uh, cell membrane function will hamper and it will be easily affected by insulin resistance. The age is the factor and overall, you know, aged people has uh, Free radical formation increase, uh, oxidative stress will happen, apoptosis uh, will be higher, different uh, hormonal changes that will cause uh, insulin resistance. Okay, and then you can go for another causes like what lifestyle, physical inactivity is one of the major cause because if you are physically inactive then your overall cell tissue function will hamper. Finally, you will get uh, the, um, uh, we can say, your energy production or energy consumption and energy uh, um, uh, burnout will be uh, somewhat imbalanced and then you can get uh, extra weight that can, you can uh, be uh, obese, okay? So physical inactivity is another issues. You can uh, say the another cause is your food. Basically, high carbohydrate intake and a high level of intake of your saturated fat, low uh, fibrous food intake. If you just uh, go for this uh, day after day, that means you are habituated to take such type of food, then it has greater chance to be affected by uh, your insulin resistance. And then finally, type 2 diabetes. And uh, another one is your mental health, that is mental stress. If someone is just under a stressful life, if you're just practicing on a stressful life, then a stress hormone or other hormonal changes can cause uh, insulin resistance. Okay, uh, another hormone uh, for female, you can say polycystic ovarian uh, problem, someone is suffering, then some uh, female uh, hormonal imbalance will happen and then uh, uh, she can uh, suffer from uh, insulin resistance. So if I just uh, go for another one is your sleeping problem. Sleeping, uh, uh, lack of sleep is one of the major uh, problem that will create a multifunctional problem of your body. One of them is your insulin resistance. Okay, so in that way, uh, we can add some another uh, parameter like high fat uh, intake or even you can say uh, overall uh, healthy lifestyle, unhealthy lifestyle. You can take alcohol, you can take uh, other unnecessary substances that can cause uh, insulin resistance. So indirectly uh, or directly different uh, substances can uh, hamper the binding of uh, insulin to the insulin receptor or insulin uh, will bind but intracellular signaling pathway 
will be hampered and finally the in, uh, sugar uh, channel that is glucose transporter channel will not be expressed properly to the membrane and sugar will not enter and finally sugar level will increase and it will cause uh, diabetes mellitus okay so now come to the main point that is insulin resistance and the molecular mechanism okay so firstly i will uh, talk about genetic cause genetic cause means gene is basically responsible you know uh, gene has a particular function so particular gene particularly it will be uh, it will express and it will produce a particular protein or peptide and that will uh, that will have a, some particular function now i will just particularly i will uh, mention insulin receptor mutation okay insulin receptor mutation you know insulin receptor in your membrane if you just draw this is your alpha subunit and this is your beta subunit of the insulin receptor okay so if you do have any problem regarding different types of parameters which will come uh, later so if you feel any problem then you must go for my previous video to make uh, your concept clear and then come to come again here okay so if this is the alpha 1 alpha uh, subunit and this is the beta subunit so two monomer polypeptide chain are very close to each other and it will work as a insulin receptor so alpha part insulin will bind and then conformational change will occur and the insulin receptor will be functioning so insulin binding pocket is there here is insulin binding pocket and that pocket on which insulin will bind so you know the in, uh, receptor is made up of protein so it is the um, uh, polymer of amino acid okay and the assembling of uh, amino acid is the protein and that will basically the function of gene gene will express okay so when particular gene of the insulin receptor will be mutated and then it will alter a particular amino acid and that will uh, produce a particular uh, protein change and that change will um, uh, make some functional change like this is the alpha uh, subunit and alpha subunit for the alpha subunit uh, protein particular gene is responsible and if that gene is mutated then uh, it will uh, change the pocket okay and then insulin binding will be hampered so if i just uh, make your attention here draw here that is arginine 1174 and your glutamine so arginine is amino acids it's your wild type amino acid uh, in the position of 1174 and when the simple mutation will occur then that it will change the um, arginine into the glutamine then what will happen the overall protein structure will change and that will change the pocket of the insulin okay so this variant comes from the mutated gene of particular gene of insulin uh, receptor gene okay so this is the uh, one matter so this is for alpha subunit for alpha subunit another uh, variant is here that is leucine 3 to 3 serine so it will change uh, as uh, as i said earlier like that the leucine will be replaced by uh, uh, serine so uh, that uh, change of the protein like it will hamper the conformational change you know when insulin will bind with the insulin receptor it will change its conformation to capture the uh, insulin properly so it will change the conformation so conformational change is very much important to activate the intracellular beta part okay so it will change the conformational uh, matter that means it will impair the uh, conformational change so this is the factor so that type of uh, mutational uh, changes of the that variant that will uh, cause conformational impairment and if i go for the beta subunit uh, region 
So another uh, genetic problem is that the beta subunit uh, gene will be mutated and that that will change the uh, that will actually create a, that variant that is phenylalanine 1 to 1 3 uh, valine and then it will just change the tyrosine kinase activity you know the tyrosine kinase is, is completely incorporated into the uh, beta subunit region and that is responsible for phosphorylation of the tyrosine residue of the uh, beta subunit region that is autophosphorylation and also this one is responsible for the phosphorylation of insulin receptor substrate okay so when the mutation uh, will occur and then that somehow change some little changes that is phenyl alanine to the valine then it will change the tyrosine activity so tyrosine kinase activity when hamper then autophosphorylation will be hampered or, or as well as the phosphorylation of uh, insulin receptor substrates also be hampered okay so the downstream signaling will be changed hamper so finally you know the further activities will not continue next one is tyrosine 1150 phenylalanine and that will change the domain function of the beta subunit you know when the uh, beta subunit will be autophosphorylated it is ready to recruit the insulin receptor substrate for the completely bind to each other and that tyrosine kinase will just phosphorylate its tyrosine okay when the tyrosine will be phosphorylated then insulin receptor substrate will be activated that will be functioning to activate the you know, phosphoinositrile and that means pi3k so that genetic mutation is just change the uh, binding as well as conformational change and also the downstream signaling pathway. And if I go for, for a further uh, gene, then you know that gene will be that uh, IP I, IRS insulin receptor substrate protein will activate the PI3K, PI3K, and that PI3K will um, uh, just activate you know the PI uh, P2 and then PI2 PI2. PIP2 will turn into PIP3. Already I uh, explained in my previous video. So you will, if you go there, then you will get some other um, factors like your AKT. You will get some uh, other factor for translocation. So that protein is very important. That factors are very important when some uh, genes which are responsible for the production of that type of factor, if they are mutated, then their activity will be uh, impaired. Okay, so like that GSK 3B and TBC1 and D1. GSK CB uh, gene uh, is responsible, the mutated, mutated gene responsible for uh, impairment of AKT function. And this gene is responsible for group 4 translocation problem. Okay, so the overall downstream protein mutation okay downstream protein mutation means downstream protein means mm, uh, your irs protein akt protein pi3k protein that protein uh, uh, is responsible for your downward 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 uh, streaming uh, uh, signaling matter so when they will be mutated then that will cause problem okay and another problem is polymorphism genetic polymorphism actually you know a gene can uh, uh, express in multiple way and that can uh, give function in diff that means different function can show so like that some genes like insulin receptor substrate one that gene can express in multiple way and that can uh, create problem for signaling pathway another one is you know the uh, paroxysm proliferator activated receptor gamma if that gene is uh, uh, just that gene function is just can be hampered by the uh, polymorphic activities and that can hamper the insulin uh, signaling pathway okay and another one is indirect region is the epigenetic factor 
you know the epigenetic matter is that genetic material directly not altered but some you know the dna is uh, uh, present in in super coil form and some histones proteins are there different types of uh, proteins are there so if that protein is uh, uh, change like acetylated or methylated then that can uh, hamper the uh, genetic material and then finally that can hamper the expression and the protein production factor so like that dna hypermethylation then dna hypermethylation can cause the uh, problem of mitochondria mitochondrial problem can happen and then mitochondrial problem is another problem mitochondrial dysfunction can cause your oxidative stress that is free radical formation will increase uh, the nitrogen uh, 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 that means your reactive oxygen species and that can cause the problem that will i will discuss later on okay so i will just uh, sum up very quickly the genetic uh, regions that means some genes will be mutated or some genes will be uh, functioning for multiple way or some gene genetic uh, material related associated protein can be hyper uh, methylated and that can cause directly or indirectly that can hamper the insulin binding or conformational change or even downstream uh, signaling factor okay so you can uh, just think that is genetic material genetic mutation can cause insulin resistance okay that can directly change the conformation directly change the uh, binding site or directly change the uh, inhibit the conformation or uh, autophosphorylation or something like that so second one just come to the second one point second point that is obesity or high fat okay so someone is obese so uh, he is very prone to be affected by insulin resistance because high fat can inhibit the expression of the insulin receptor on the surface of the membrane okay fat can inhibit the express expression of the receptor another one is that when intracellular uh, uh, fat uh, will be accumulated then the accumulated fat can increase the production of uh, particular second messenger that is diacylglycerol and that uh, diacylglycerol will over activate the pkc that is protein kinase and that will hamper the insulin receptor substrate and finally signaling pathway how like you are within your cell sorry within your cell fat accumulation occur and that will increase the production of dag that is diacylglycerol and that will you know that will activate the pkc and that pkc will hamper the insulin receptor substrate okay if that insulin receptor substrate will be uh, inhibited by pkc then it will not be autophosphorylated by the um, uh, autophosphorylated beta subunit that means it will not bind over there and it will not be active so the signaling downstream signaling will be hampered by the protein accumulation sorry fat accumulation so this is a uh, matter fat accumulation and you, you know the free fatty acid if it is travel throughout the body it can uh, aggregate or you can adhere uh, it can adhere between different types of on the surface of different types of organs or cell tissues and that will hamper the activity of the uh, receptor like that if you think the free fatty uh, free fatty acid is travel to the uh, liver and it can aggregate over there it can cause uh, fatty liver and fatty liver is one of the uh, region for metabolic disorder okay so that one, that one is issue. another one if you are obese you are, if your blood carry more fat then it will be oxidized more quickly and oxidized fat can uh, create uh, excess free, free radical and that free radical can cause the oxidative stress that means your body will suffer from uh, free radical and antioxidant imbalance and that will be problematic for your uh, insulin receptor and 
downstream signal pathway. Okay, so this is uh, the fat related problem because fat, when you obey, then your uh, adipose tissue will be overloaded and that will create such type of problems. Okay, you know, uh, when uh, your fat is also responsible for inflammation. Okay, so inflammation when occur and if, you, if it will be sustainable, that means chronic inflammation and that will produce some particular uh, cytokine that can be your tumor necrosis factor alpha or even interleukin 6 and that will cause directly the insulin resistance, responsible for insulin resistance. Okay, so this is number two is obesity. And number three is mitochondrial dysfunction. Okay, you know mitochondria is the powerhouse of your cell and that is responsible for mostly production of ATP because it will consume your uh, raw material and that will produce energy. Okay, so if anyway, by different ways, if your mitochondria is, uh, mitochondrial function is dysfunctional, then that will, uh, that will just decrease its production of ATP and it will increase more nitrogen, uh, sorry, raw, uh, reactive oxygen species, that is ROS, that means free radical, sorry. And that free radical can, uh, if the production of free radical increase, so ultimately in the ratio of free radical, antioxidant level will decrease and finally oxidative stress will occur. And already I said over there, oxidative stress can hamper the RA, uh, insulin receptor substrate signal pathway. And that will uh, just inhibit the further uh, pathway. Okay, so this is another problem. And fourth one is wrong phosphorylation. Already I said over there, when insulin will bind with insulin uh, alpha subunit and that will change its conformation and that will activate the uh, beta subunit. And beta subunit content, uh, uh, beta subunit content tyrosine kinase. And that tyrosine kinase cause autophosphorylation of its, itself and also it is responsible for phosphorylation of insulin receptor substrate. Okay, so insulin receptor substrate will be phosphorylated in the site of tyrosine region. Okay, the tyrosine will be phosphorylated by that tyrosine kinase enzyme. This is the normal phenomenon. And then when it will be uh, phosphorylated, then it will be activated. And activated one will just activate the PI3K. Already I you know, said earlier. Okay. So, what will happen? Tyrosine uh, should be phosphorylated, but mistakenly, the serine residue of this uh, insulin receptor substrate, serine residue, okay, that will be phosphorylated. So, when the serine will be phosphorylated, then what will happen? It will inhibit the, ultimately, it will inhibit, it will inhibit the phosphorylation of tyrosine and without tyrosine residue phosphorylation of the insulin receptor substrate, it will not be activated, it will not act, be active. So, it will unable to activate the PI3K and PI3K is unable to activate ultimately PIP2 and finally the further procedure will not be followed. Okay, so this is the problem. So, wrong phosphorylation is one of the major region. Basically, the serine uh, protein uh, location is uh, 307. Okay, so this one is another major problem, wrong phosphorylation. Next one is endoplasmic reticulum stress. You know, endoplasmic reticulum is one of the major organelles of your, within your cell because it has multiple function. You know, usually, Endoplasmic reticulum contains uh, calcium and it can uh, regulate the calcium, intercellular calcium level. Okay, so you can say it is a storekeeper of calcium. But it has another major function is to just uh, maintain the modification of uh, protein, that is post-translational modification. Basically, protein will be active protein, that is folding, folded. You know, the protein is uh, basically the long chain amino acid and it will be folded in different way and that will produce a particular active protein. That active protein will be functioning. 
Okay, that is the normal function of uh, endoplasmic reticulum. But when, anyway, endoplasmic reticulum will, will be in a stressful condition, that means it will be, its activity will be hampered by different uh, intercellular um, uh, factors or some uh, different regions, basically. So when the endoplasmic reticulum will be dysfunctional, will be um, uh, will be in a stressed, uh, uh, then what will happen? The function of uh, folding of the endoplasmic reticulum will be changed. And what will happen? It will produce misfolded protein. That means wrong, it will fold the protein in wrong way. So misfolded protein will be another problematic protein. Okay, for the overall uh, within uh, overall uh, intercellular factor, but one of the major factor for intracellular insulin signaling pathway. That means your downstream signal will be hampered because the misfolded protein will interrupt their function. That is that is the problem. So one of, one of the major problem is endoplasmic reticulum dysfunction. Okay, so this is the major issues. So this endoplasmic reticulum uh, misfolded protein can hamper uh, the uh, PIP3K, it can hamper AKT, that is protein kinase B, or it can hamper the GLUT4 uh, uh, translocation. Mm, okay, so this is the factor matter. And the last one is inflammation. Although I a uh, little bit covered uh, in previous one. So inflammation, basically, you know, inflammation is a complex immunological reaction between injurious agents of your connective tissues and cell tissues. That is the inflammation. So inflammation is very possible. Frequently, your body is just going, undergoing uh, inflammation. But if it will be uh, for a long time, that is for chronic inflammation. So that chronic inflammation, some particular cytokines are continuously producing and some uh, cytokines is directly responsible for hampering or impairing the function of insulin or insulin uh, receptor function. That is intracellular downstream signaling pathway. Okay, so that uh, cytokines are basically tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukin 6, and some other cytokines are there. Okay, so these uh, cytokines can hamper the insulin receptor function. Okay, so if you just, uh, just think very closely, that is, insulin receptor is directly uh, or indirectly affected and then the function of insulin receptor or downstream factors will be hampered and finally ultimate goal you know the ultimate goal of the insulin function is to create more glucose transporter on the surface of the membrane of the cell and you know what type of cell basically your skeletal muscle your cardiac muscle your adipose tissues insulin is a must to just create a new way of uh, glucose transporter okay so what is the main uh, closed loop already i said that is directly it will hamper the insulin receptor your binding site, your, it will impair the conformational change, it will impair the function of uh, tyrosine kinase, it will impair the binding uh, domain that will directly connect it with the insulin receptor. And indirectly, different types of factors, protein, are responsible for uh, completing the insulin uh, signaling pathway. That can be insulin receptor substrate protein, that can be your PIP, PI3K, that can be AKT, that can be RAB, different types of factors are there. And that proteins 
that can be affected by free radical antioxidant that means uh, free radical that can be um, affected by misfolded protein or that can be affected by cytokine that is the direct uh, problem but those proteins will come from the particular gene and if that genes those genes are uh, mutated then directly their function will be changed and ultimately the whole pathway will be affected that means if you start your journey from here and uh, your destination is there so directly you can be uh, you, your uh, way or your um, uh, walking will be stopped your action will be stopped initially or even here or even here or even here so the insulin will start its journey from the binding of insulin with the insulin receptor and then the different factors and finally your membrane will create a new uh, glucose transporter channel and glucose will enter so anyway directly or indirectly different uh, factors already I discussed your insulin function will be hamper and so your when your insulin function will be hamper then you can simply it is called you can say insulin resistance okay so insulin will not bind or even after binding it will not send the final message to the uh, final protein and that will contribute to create a new transporter protein glucose transporter protein so all the way through the function of insulin can be hampered okay so this is all about insulin resistance. Uh, so if you are a slightly benefited from my uh, video or lecture, so please subscribe as a reward, okay, as a feedback. And you can share if it is worthy. And I am expecting uh, your question, your suggestion in my comment box, okay. So thank you very much.